look forward to another year of In the Trenches presented by First Star Logistics, but we wanted to give you some big news. This season, you'll find our interviews and keys to Bengals victory on In the Trenches in the First Star Media Group YouTube channel, along with our growing team of Joe Goodbury's Bengals on the Brain and Malik Wright's State of the Jungle. Also, the great folks at First Star Logistics have big plans this season with special giveaways each week the Bengals play. So be sure to visit both channels and our social media pages to stay updated on all giveaways and the latest news on the Bengals. So be sure to subscribe to the First Star Media Group YouTube channel as after this season, it'll become the channel that will host all our content. You're in the trenches with Dave Lapham, presented by First Star Logistics. Lapham was on the call. Big win for the Cincinnati Bengals. 31-17 over the San Francisco 49ers. Reminder, make sure you get in on First Star Logistics giveaway every week the Bengals play during the 2023 season. And Lap, you're fighting that cold, but man, the Bengals defense and offense, big game on both sides of the football. Yeah, I mean, I'd even say, you know, special teams as well. I mean, it was complimentary football. Offense, defense, special teams. This 49er team had won 11 in a row at home. Purdy had not lost here in San Francisco. He was 8-0. Uh, it's tough. The crowd noise is a, is a huge factor. And for them to go into the football game and never trail and ended up winning the football game by 14 points is uh, is massive. There's no question about it. It's a, it's a big, big win. I think it could be a, a springboard kind of win where they could stack a few together. Uh, this one was extremely significant, to say the least. The Bengals, three straight games, opening drive with a touchdown. Joe Burrow threw his 90th touchdown pass of that, and I think it was his 100th touchdown overall on such a big day, 28-32 for 283 yards and three touchdowns. Joe Burrow looked like the Joe Burrow Bengals fans have loved. No doubt. And, and his six rushes for 43 yards, averaging over seven yards per rush, a long of 20, were huge as well. He extended drives with his legs and his feet, as well as his throwing arm, you know, which was uh, unbelievable. And when he's doing that, it makes it gives another dimension for the offense to uh, take advantage of. And I talked to Joe in the locker room after the game, and, you know, just, Joe, you're, you look awesome, man. You, you're 100%. He goes, yeah, I feel pretty good now. And he said, I worked real hard in the offseason on my athleticism, you know, my overall body strength and athleticism. He said, and then, you know, it was taken from me. Now I got a chance to show what I had done in the offseason. And boy, is he ever. I mean, he completed 17 in a row at one stretch during the uh, during the football game. 28 to 32, that's like 88% against a defensive football team. You know, that's that's good. I mean, the 49ers are a legit football team. And, you know, I think uh, Joe Mixon running the way he did today, 87 yards rushing on, on only 16 carries, averaging 5.4 per and rushing for a touchdown and complimenting the, um, you know, the passing attack. There was a lot of complimentary footballs on uh, football played on a lot of levels, you know, between the three phases of football and within each phase of football. Pass rush complimented coverage, coverage complimented pass rush on the defensive side of it. It was just, you know, one of those games when you play a team that's this good in their place and you play as well as they did, you know, tip your cap to the Bengals. Defensively, interceptions by both Logan Wilson and Jermaine Pratt. Should have been another one that was called back because of a penalty on D, uh, DJ Reader that, man, when you look at it, you sit there and you go, form tackling is not allowed to happen anymore when it comes to right. tackling the quarterback. I know. It was crazy. I, I couldn't – that was a head scratcher. There's absolutely no two ways about that. Um, but, yeah, I thought, you know, going, going into this football game, you, you got to give, uh, give credit to the, you know, the opponent – uh, they, they have they have Greenlaw, they have Warner at the linebacker position, and a lot of people in the National Football League thinks that thinks that's the best tandem, the best duo of linebackers. Well, Pratt and Wilson outplayed them today, so I think that was important to those two players, uh, Lou Anarumo's defense and the football team in in the ultimate outcome of the game. And uh, and, and the Greenlaw and Warner are good football players, but there's no doubt. Logan Wilson and Jermaine Pratt, Lou Anarumo has gone on record saying he wouldn't trade him for anybody. They love Lou Anarumo. The, the synergy and the chemistry between, you know, coach, player, teammates, uh, it's just, it's extraordinary on that side of the football. Let's, let's talk, let's go back to offense and talk about the offensive line. Frank Pollock, a former 49er, Super Bowl winner with the 49ers, had to have, be very excited because his guys played big today. They did play big and 
Um, the 49ers had 100 players from various Super Bowl teams back here for a reunion, and Frank was played on one of those teams. So he saw some guys at the hotel last night, and, you know, he, he had fun with his 49er teammates and his family. And I saw him this morning. I'm like, a big night? He goes, yeah, but the, the icing on the cake will be beating the 49ers. And I saw him after the game. I said, Coach, icing, man. You got a, you got a lot of icing. You got two inches of icing on that cake. Uh, so yeah, it was a it was a, a big day for for Frank Pollock. I thought his guys, the the run blocking was really good. Pass protection was sound. I thought they played at a very high level. There's no doubt. There early on, we thought Trey Hendrickson was going to be lost for the day. He ended up with one and a half sacks, I believe it was on the day uh any word on how that ankle foot whatever it was that was uh that got dinged up earlier yeah i mean it's going to be one of those dave you, you know you've been around the game a long time it's like how's it going to feel tomorrow morning you know i mean i'm sure they've uh they're, they're gonna make sure that you get some treatment on the flight i'm sure they'll have hot and cold treatments back there and uh they'll be making you know just taped up to prevent as much swelling as possible but You'll know better tomorrow after he sleeps on it overnight, see what kind of damage was done. But he's a, he's a warrior, man. He got it out with a big old dog gut, there's no doubt. How big is it to get it when you go to the West Coast? They had the bye week. That helps a lot. They, they come away with a big win. But it, it, as we've talked about many times, it will not get any easier because they're going to welcome in the Buffalo Bills next Sunday night in a primetime uh, showdown against teams that uh, are looking for the same goal to get to an AFC championship and to a Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, talked about it at the end of the broadcast. They went undefeated, undefeated in the NFC West. That's great. That's four wins. But it's nothing. Um, the reason that they're in last place now with the tiebreakers is their own two of the division. We talked about it now ad nauseum. I mean, it's a fact. They're going to have to start stacking some AFC wins, and the best way to do it is to is to knock off the Buffalo Bills, who, you know, I mean, they're they're playing uh, good football. They're 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 inconsistent with their play. Bengals certainly can beat the uh, the Buffalo Bills, and that's going to be a, a big game on Sunday night. That's the next game of the now it's 10 games remaining 10 one game seasons remaining they gotta make sure they take care of business against the buffalo bills and they get them at paycor and it's going to be wild man it's going to be electric there for sure lab we know you're fighting that cold and you got to get the bus to get back home to cincinnati so you can take care of that last final thoughts before we go here on in the trenches with dave lapham presented by first star logistics well the bengals won areas that they needed to win dave Talked about it a lot in the first half. The Bengals were dominant on first down. I mean, out of their first 225 yards, 175 yards of it came on first down. They, they barely got to third down. They were killing them on first down. I thought that was a big key in the football game. I thought, you know, they won the turnover battle. That was huge. In the red zone, they went four for five, four touchdowns and five red zone possessions. And unfortunately, had to fumble Irv Smith Jr., but that red zone production at 80 percent you'll take that all day every day so a lot of uh a lot of areas that you need to perform well in to win football games they did against a very very good opponent so they should feel proud and they should feel satisfied for sure lab safe trip home take care of that cold we will see you in the trenches later this week at the first star logistics studios you got it dave thanks man Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. Opportunity knocking.